Is the world that we live in really three-dimensional? Now, some years ago, this would have appeared as a very silly question to ask. But now physicists are increasingly convinced that the world that we live in actually has six other dimensions of space that we do not directly see, but which are actually there. If you consider time as another dimension, then we have 3 plus 6 plus 1, that is 10 dimensions of space and time. What a strange idea! Where did it come from? Before I get into that, let me explain what dimensions are. In one dimension, there can only be a line. So, if we take this as some fixed point, and this is some other point, in order to know how far this is, we need to know only one number. Let's call that x. That's why we say this line is one-dimensional, n equals 1. In two dimensions, if there's a point over here, I need to know how far it is in this direction and how far it is in this direction. So I need two numbers. Let's call them x and y. That's why this is two-dimensional. So we call this a plane in two dimensions. In three dimensions, we need to give three numbers, x, y, z. If we give these three, we will know where a point is inside this cube over here. And that's a three-dimensional system. So then this begs the question, what does n equal to 4 look like? Sorry, I'm not going to be able to help you on that because I just cannot pictureize what that looks like. We humans are limited by our experience to n equal to 3. And n equal to 10, that's way beyond us. But instead of going to the more difficult, let's go to the easier. Let's go to n equal to 2. What does that world look like? The two-dimensional world would be such a strange world indeed. For example, there could not be any birds in it. Here I'm using a picture from the physicist Brian Greene's book. Imagine that there was a bird, then of course it would have to eat something in order to stay alive. That food would have to go to its stomach, be digested, and then come out. But then that food passage separates the bird into two separate parts, and the two parts have nothing to hold them together because, well, it's just a two-dimensional world. There's so much that one could imagine about living in a two-dimensional world, and it would be such a different experience. For example, imagine a prisoner who is locked in his two-dimensional prison cell. He is watched over by his two-dimensional prison guards. But then there comes somebody from three dimensions, Albert Einstein, and he yanks out the prisoner into the third dimension. Well, wouldn't you and I be utterly lost if somebody was to disappear from a closed room and leave no trace at all? Well, that's a lot of science fiction there. But then the question is, why are serious physicists even contemplating six missing dimensions? And basically the answer is that there are two parts of physics that are extremely successful and yet are in mutual contradiction with each other unless the world that we live in is 10-dimensional. Let me explain. On the one hand, there is quantum mechanics. It works beautifully in explaining the structure of atoms, molecules, nuclei. It's responsible for the existence of the transistor, existence of your computer, and so forth. On the other hand, there is the theory of general relativity formulated by Albert Einstein, and that works beautifully too, although its successes are not as well known as those of quantum mechanics. But unfortunately, the marriage of quantum mechanics and general relativity just didn't work out. 
if you try and combine these two great principles together, you run into a theoretical inconsistency and the greatest minds of the last century tried and tried for 50 years and they couldn't succeed. Then there was a breakthrough in the 1980s when it was discovered that yes, you could actually combine the two together, but only if the world is 10 dimensional. All right, so then the question is, where are the other dimensions? Let me explain how we can possibly make the other dimensions disappear. Let's start with this two-dimensional plane. It's a piece of paper that I can now fold up. And when I fold it up, it becomes a cylinder. Now on this cylinder, imagine there's an ant. That ant can move like this or it can move around the cylinder. Now, as I make the cylinder smaller and smaller in radius, the ant is not able to go around it, and so that ant begins to think that she is on a single line. In other words, from two dimensions, we've gone down to one dimension. Let's look at it here. Here is two dimensions. Well, I've now converted this into a cylinder. Again, two dimensions. But now, if I make that radius smaller and smaller, I get one dimension. I've curled it up into this ring. That's still one dimension. But it's getting smaller and smaller until I reach a little point with no dimension zero dimension. So this is how to go from two dimensions to zero dimensions. Well, obviously, there's a very great challenge to go from the 10-dimensional world that the theorists predict to the four-dimensional world that you and I see all around us. So now the real question is, how can we ever possibly know whether they are right or wrong? Let's now concentrate upon this question, but before that, the picture that modern physics now gives to us is the following. You and I and all the matter that exists in the universe is on this brain. This is a three dimensions in space and one dimensions in time surface. Now, everything that we can see around us is on this. So here am I over here. Here are you and all the quarks and electrons and everything except for particles of gravity which are called gravitons. Now these gravitons can live in the remaining six dimensions out here. So we are on this surface, this brain, whereas Gravity can be on the other dimensions as well. How on earth do you check that idea? There are two possible ways. The first, in which you see if the law of gravitation that Newton discovered 400 years ago is actually 100% correct or not. So in Newton's law of gravitation, if there are two bodies, let's say this one and this one, and they're separated by a distance which we shall call d between them, then the force between these two is proportional to 1 over the square of the distance between them. But if Newton's law is not exact, and if there is, let's say, instead of this 2, 2.00001 or something like that, or 1.9999. In that case, even that tiny, tiny deviation from Newton's law of gravity would be indication that the gravitons have traveled into those extra dimensions of space and time. And so looking for the tiniest deviation from Newton's law of gravitation is one way of detecting the presence of those extra dimensions. Another way would be to smash two protons together or anything else together. We know how much energy there is in the beginning. 
we can measure how much energy there is at the end, even if there is a tiny, tiny discrepancy between them, then we will know that that missing energy was carried off by gravity into the remaining dimensions. Now, unfortunately, there is no evidence of any missing energy, any deviation from Newton's laws, and so people have looked, but they haven't been successful. But that doesn't mean that they will not be successful in 10 years, in 50 years from now. And in fact, this is one of the very exciting areas of physics. Surely, in the next few decades, we're going to get the answer to this fascinating question, is the world just four-dimensional?